couples attend a party at the home of Dean and Bunny. The wives play a game where they balance a tray with a glass of liquor on their heads, and Bunny ends up the winner. Another couple, Jack and Alice, sneak out for a drive and to make love in their car. The following day, Alice prepares breakfast for Jack, and they seem to have a perfect life. The couples and their friends live in a perfect city called Victory Town, which is set in the 1950s. Every morning, the husbands leave for work in the desert, where Victory headquarters are located. Their wives know they are all in the technology sector, and that's just about it. Alice stays home and spends time with Bunny and the other wives who are generally tasked with cleaning and preparing food for their husbands. They are also discouraged from going near the Victory headquarters to avoid getting exposed to the hazardous materials the organization works with. Alice goes to a dance class headed by Shelley, the wife of Frank, who is the founder of Victory Town. The wives also welcome a new woman, Violet, whose husband, Bill, has joined other men to work on the Victory Project. Everybody in the community attends a party hosted by Frank and his wife to welcome the newest members of the community. Margaret, one of the wives, says women are not supposed to be there. Her husband, Ted, pulls her away before she can make a scene. Frank gives an arousing speech about what it means to live in victory and mentions the work men do there. While looking for her husband, Alice notices Margaret with her husband, who appears to give her some pills. She looks quite weird and tells Alice that she is having bad dreams before her husband closes the blinds. Alice goes into the house and finds Jack putting on Frank's tie. They start kissing as Frank walks into the room and watches, but only Alice notices him. The wives talk about how Margaret used to be normal and their friendship together until she went mad. A while back, she had taken her son out into the desert against the rules, which had resulted in his disappearance. She claims that Victory took him to discipline her, but her claims are dismissed as trauma-induced paranoia. One morning, Alice takes a trolley across town and happens to notice a plane crash onto the side of the mountain. She tells the driver to take her there, but he refuses and says it is not his route and that they are not supposed to go there for their own safety so she proceeds on foot. On her way to investigate the accident, she accidentally stumbles upon Victory Headquarters, a small dome covered in mirror-like windows. She touches the mirror and immediately begins to experience hallucinations. She sees images of drops of blood and women dancing in synchronization along with hearing Frank's voice. Alice then wakes up at home, and Jack tells her she was there when he returned, though she has no memory of how she got home. He also tells her there was no plane crash, which further confuses Alice. The next day, she is almost squashed between a window and a moving wall. As she's about to be crushed, she gasps, and finds the wall and window where they are supposed to be. She receives a call from Margaret, who somehow knows what she saw in the desert. Margaret tells Alice that now she has experienced the same thing she did, and therefore, the claim that Margaret is crazy is false. Alice hangs up the phone because she does not want to associate with Margaret and be a social outcast. In the following days, she experiences strange hallucinations. She finds a crate of eggs filled with empty shells, 
and while taking a bath, she slips, and her reflection appears to look back at her. Later, during a dance illustration taught by Shelley, Alice has a vision of Margaret smashing her head against a mirror. At first, she's quiet, but suddenly lets out a scream, and now everybody is convinced she's crazy. She rushes back to her area, and is just in time to see Margaret slit her own throat and fall from the roof of a building. As soon as this happens, Alice is dragged away by men in red jumpsuits before she can get to Margaret. Alice explains the event to Jack, who dismisses it and says that Margaret fell while cleaning the window and is recuperating in the hospital with her husband, who has even been excused from his duties to take care of her. This claim is later echoed by Dr. Collins, who says he has given her a prescription. Frank and Alice get into an argument, and Alice asks him what he does for work, which he answers that the details of his work are classified. He then tells her that they have a good thing going on, and if she keeps behaving this way, they are going to lose everything. The following day, as she wraps up food, Alice starts to wrap her own face in plastic, they decide to call the doctor, who tries to prescribe some medication. Alice tries to find out how Margaret survived, but her questions are brushed off. Dr. Collins forgets to pick up his briefcase as Jack walks him to his car. Alice opens it and takes Margaret's file before handing him the case. The medical records are heavily redacted, and when she fails to find any helpful information, she burns the file in anger and frustration. She starts to get paranoid, and feels like Frank secretly watches her every move. That night, during a special event in which Jack is getting promoted to the senior advisory board, Alice suffers a breakdown in the restroom and gets comforted by Bunny. She tries to explain everything to Bunny, but she snaps and responds that Alex is being hysterical and is attempting to ruin everything for everyone. She even accuses her of sounding like Margaret. Alice realizes that if she keeps telling people about her visions, they will outcast her. So she decides to play along and keep it to herself. Jack and Alice invite their neighbors, Frank and Shelley, Bill and Violet, and Peg and Peter, to a dinner to celebrate his promotion, with Frank and Shelley as guests of honor. Frank speaks to Alice in the kitchen, and admits to her that she's right in her suspicion, and says he has waited for someone to challenge him openly. Alice tries to expose him over dinner, by questioning him about the things that the wives of the town are not supposed to know. She also draws similarities in how they landed in victory, and how their past lives are completely vague and blurry. She questions how all the women come from either Baltimore, Philadelphia, or Chicago. The women also seem to have the same story about how they met their husbands, where the women drop their train tickets, and the men pick them up for their wives. Frank dismisses her, saying he expected much more from her, and goes ahead to make her look delusional in front of the guests at the table. He retorts that Alice had gone to the headquarters where women are forbidden. He also says that she is sick, and the delusions she is having are symptoms of her sickness. Alice tries to keep going, but Shelley interrupts her, saying that she will not let her husband be insulted. She then leaves, and everybody else leaves with her. After the guests leave, Alice tries to convince Jack that she is telling the truth, and pleads with him to get them out of victory, to which he agrees. However, he lets Frank's men take her as soon as she gets into the car. He remains in the car 
and can only sit there and yell with regret. Dr. Collins subjects her to electrotherapy against her will. During the procedure, Alice experiences flashbacks where she is in the real world and is a surgeon named Alice Warren. She lives in an apartment with Jack, who complains about her busy schedule. Their relationship is beginning to deteriorate because they can't afford a good place to live and generally a good life. Jack lost his job and sits all day listening to podcasts and conspiracy theories. He listens to Frank's motivational speeches and is inspired to join the Victory Project. It turns out the project is a virtual simulation intended to keep women trapped to serve the needs of their husbands. Jack makes up his mind to join the Victory Project. He drugs Alice and places her in a medically induced coma, then attaches her to a virtual reality device with her eyelids wide open and an IV in her arm. Back in Victory, Alice has apparently been a cured of her hysteria by the doctors. She reunites with Jack, but continues to experience hallucinations and flashbacks. On the second day, Jack comes home from work, and she greets him with a drink in hand. As soon as Jack plays a specific song, Alice freezes. It happens that every morning, Jack wakes up in the real world and works to have enough money to maintain his wife's body. He sings the specific song to her before rejoining her in Victory. Alice realizes that Victory is a simulation and that Jack forced her into her current life, hoping they can live a perfect life together. They get into an argument and Jack claims he did all this for her as she was living a miserable life, although she was content living her life in the real world. Alice asks him if there are other people who are trapped and don't know about it. He answers that he is only responsible for her, and that most of the wives in the program are not aware of it. Jack hugs her and begins to suffocate her. In a struggle to break free from his grip, Alice smashes his head with a glass, and he dies in victory and the real world as well. Alice also blacks out for a couple of minutes, and when she wakes up, Bunny is in her house. Bunny admits she knew about the project and did it for her kids, who had died in the real world, but are alive in the simulation. She goes on to tell her that if a man is killed in the fake world, he also dies in the real world. However, women cannot kill themselves because if they do, their husbands can bring them back to the virtual world. Now that Jack is dead, there is nobody to bring her back, so she has an opportunity to leave and be conscious in the real world. The wives begin to learn the truth, which throws the husbands into panic mode. Bunny tells Alice to go to the headquarters, which houses the exit portal from the simulation. She holds off Bill as he tries to attack Alice for killing Jack and also keep her from escaping. Alice gets in her husband's car and drives out in the desert with the red suits and Dr. Collins pursuing her. She suddenly hits the brakes, which causes Dr. Collins to collide with some of the red suits, killing them instantly. More cars give chase until she gets to the top of the mountain. Meanwhile, Frank hears of Alice's escape, which prompts Shelley to stab him. She says he messed up by failing to keep things in order, and it's now her turn. Alice's car gets stuck on the mountain, forcing her to get out and run uphill. The red suits come after her as she runs towards the mirror. Just when she makes it to the mirror, she has a vision of Jack telling her to stay in victory. However, she has already developed a conscience of her own and therefore 
cannot be manipulated. She takes the leap and touches the glass of the headquarters window. For a second, the screens fade to black and we can hear a woman gasping for air, which means Alice has successfully woken up in the real world.